Hey everybody, hope you're doing awesome and I hope you're really enjoying these marketing and sales messages that Amy and I are sending out to you. So this message is probably one of, and I, in my opinion, the most important message you can hear. And it's the one that I see over and over and over again that people are missing out on. As a matter of fact, uh, Dean Jackson is one of, one of, if not the, most successful marketers online. As a matter of fact, if you've ever gone to, did I say as a matter of fact twice right there? I did. If you go online to anything uh, and it asks you, to put in your email address and phone number, that's called a squeeze page or a lead page and a lead capture page. And Dean Jackson invented that. I actually just got to be at an event with him uh, this last weekend. Brilliant guy, just so smart. And he talked on this subject. I had already planned on talking about the subject, and I was just super happy that he brought out the subject again because. This subject is this, it's if you want to activate more profits in your business, if you really want to be super successful and making sure you're talking to the right people who want your product, you have to know and be crystal clear on who your target market is. I call it very simply your ideal client. Now, some of you are going, oh, everyone is my ideal client. I, I want to work on everybody, whether, no matter what the modality is that you do, you're thinking, everyone should have what I have because it's so amazing. And it probably is amazing. And I'm excited for it to be amazing. And in order for you to win the game when it comes to business and getting more people who want your product into your business, you must know who your ideal client is. In order to know who your ideal client is, it's important for you to create what I call your avatar. And just like I wrote my book, if you've read anything in my book, you know, I'm not talking about the big, tall, blue people from the James Cameron movie, Avatar. I'm talking about your avatar. Who is this person? What do they look like? What type of income do they have? How do they, um, how do they want to consume your product? So for example, that's a really important question that not a lot of people ask. How do they want to consume your product? There are people who want to get in and out and get just get done things done super fast. And then there's people who are willing to take the time as long as they get the results in the end. You have to know who your target market is and who your ideal client or your avatar is. Does your avatar want to, uh, it, or sorry, is your avatar somebody who is very modern and um, focused on technology? So for example, if you're in the orthodontic space, would your avatar be more inclined to come to you by using technology like uh, being able to do Skype appointments for say retainer checks or just check-ins? Would your avatar, is your avatar somebody who uh, just wants to get things done faster, won't uh, hire you if you're gonna tell him it's gonna take 18 to 24 months because they just don't have that time in their life? I'll give you a personal example. So many of you have seen me live and in person and doing things and you've noticed that I've had, as, a, as at the time of this recording, I have my little Carrier appliance on, on my mouth, right? I went to my uh, orthodontist who happens to be a client of mine and I said, look, I want to fix my teeth. I want to straighten my teeth a little better. I was a terrible patient who I never wore my retainers after probably age 20 and I can already tell teeth are shifted and I need to do some uh, new things. He noticed through x-rays and through his exam that I need to fix my jawline, I could do jaw surgery and other things we can do. But I said, listen, I speak all the time on stage. I'm with clients like this. I'm not gonna put braces on. I'm just not gonna do it. So for me, Invisalign was the key. So for him to start talking to me and pitching me about braces and how much faster we can get braces done, that would not be wise. For him, he would need to start talking more about the Invisalign and how we can make it work. Although in order to do that, we're first going to need to put on these carrier appliances and tell me the process, which I fully got engaged with and was like, okay, that's cool. The point is, is that with your clients, you have to be able to know who to talk to them. Maybe I'm not your ideal client, but who is your ideal client? Who's the avatar? Now, a lot of people make the mistake of thinking that if they create their avatar, and again, I mean your avatar should have, you should have a name to that avatar. You should have an age range. You should have an income level. You should have a, maybe a political belief. 
Where do they live? What's important to them? How many kids do they have? Or how, how old are they as a kid? What is your ideal client? And when I say ideal client, I want you to really think about who are the people that if you got more of those, it would thrill you because they are participants in your treatment, because they are always on time, because they never have to have a problem with them paying. When you ask them to do something, they do it. Listen, in my business, I have very specific ideal clients. I know who my ideal client is, and I know the people that when I go outside of those parameters, I'm gonna work, have to work harder. And I know I might not get the best results because I'm going outside the parameters of my ideal clients. I wanna make my life easy for me, and I want you to make your life easy for you. The challenge that a lot of people have is that when they think of their ideal client, they think if I'm gonna focus on just an ideal client or I'm gonna create an avatar, then there's so many more other people I can serve, and that's true. But you'll serve them better and they will come to you more decisively when you have this set up. Let me give an example. So if I know, if my avatar is this person, and I'm targeting all of my marketing to this person. That's the longer one. Then it makes it easier in all of my decision making when it comes to where do I want to market? Who do I want to market to? What companies do I market with? Do I want to market with radio? If I want to market with radio, do I want to market on the golden oldie stations or do I want to market to the uh, hip hop and pop stations? Or do I want to market on satellite radio? This helps me understand everything. Do I want to have t-shirts or do I want to have baseball caps? Do I want to uh, go to a local event and hand out uh, iPod and iPhone chargers or do I want to uh, throw out Frisbees? All of those things go into play when you know who your avatar is and it makes it easier, especially if you have that character created. But the place where people don't get is as you're target marketing to these, naturally what's going to happen is you will also hit, uh, let me use a different color, you will also hit people out here who might not be your target market, but they are around, they're in the periphery of that target market. So you're gonna have people who are hitting here. So maybe it's not your avatar, but maybe it's a secondary. You use not spell secondary with a two, but you get what I'm saying here. And then maybe, uh, and then sooner than that, you're gonna hit people out here. You might not get as many, and that's okay, but as you're marketing to this people, your avatar, other people will get hit on the way. Well, I market primarily to orthodontists and dentists. That's my sweet spot. I know how to help any orthodontist make more money in their business by not even focusing on the, the traditional principles that most people think about. I know that through me being uh, not a consultant for them, but for an, as an advisor, I can help them create the team that they want. I know that my avatar wants specific things and is focused on certain things and will do certain things. However, and that's in the orthodontic space. However, I have a chiropractic client, a client who is a naturopath. I have a client who is a financial planner who does huge deals with big financial planners in Washington, D.C. They came to me because they saw some of my marketing and it, even though it wasn't specifically um, worded to them, it was getting to them. I, was, I hit them as I was getting to them. I was hitting the mark while I was aiming for this target. So when you're doing it, look, even in, this, in these videos, right? Amy and I are focusing these videos on helping you do better sales and marketing. We are focusing more on the, the uh, pr private practice owner, but I also know that my sweet spot is orthodontics. But if you're here and you're a dentist or you're a uh, endodontist or you're a, a pediatric dentist or you're a chiropractor or you're a uh, ear, nose and throat doctor, whatever it might be, I can help you too. I know that the principles of what I do work. The product you give to people works no matter who it's to. But when I'm marketing and when I'm focused in on who I want to talk to, I have to know who my avatar is. It makes my life so much easier in meetings with my uh, online people, with my Facebook ad people, with uh, where I want to place ads in certain place in certain areas, who I, where I want to sponsor and do exhibits, where I want to speak and who I want to speak in front of. For you, it's the exact same way. So if you know who your ideal client is and you know who your avatar is, 
It will answer so many other questions for you as you're trying to get your message out to more and more people. Do not skip this. I, 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 it's, it's literally business 101. And I know many of you that are watching this never got the business education that you deserve to get when you're in school. This is business 101. If you don't know who you are wanting to serve, who your target market is, and you focus more on that, then you will be wasting a lot of time. What's happening, I'm using a lot of examples this time, but what's happening is in your marketing, you're either doing one of two ways to market. You're either using a... I'm going to do a terrible drawing here of a gun. <laughs> you're either shotgun marketing, which is meaning you're going to throw stuff out there and hopefully it hits someone. You're just going to shotgun market it. Or you're going to, I'm going to do another terrible gun drawing. Now you'll get to know me. Or you're going to, those are really Terrible drawings, but I, that's why I do what I do. I'm not an artist. Uh, you're either shotgun marketing or you're, or you're going to um, rifle market. So you're going to shoot straight to hit the target or you're going to just spin it out of there. I'm telling you, both of them are okay in marketing. This one you're going to spend a lot more money on and get smaller results. This one you're going to get more targeted results for people coming straight back to you. You know who you're talking to and your results are going to be higher. Every single time. You have to know, Apple knows who they market to. Disney knows who they market to. I use this example a lot when it comes to Apple, right? Apple's target market is very interesting because what they did is they took a high item, a high priced item, and they marketed it to people who should not be able to afford it. College students. That's their main target. Think different, be unique. Uh, don't, you know, uh, what's it called? Uh, fight a after, not after. Fight back against a man or whatever it is or the machine. But what they have done is because they've targeted it that way, they've also brought in a ton of people who want faster productivity, want to believe they, they are creative and think better and faster. And you, I, you can identify with it even though they're marketing to a very specific audience. You do the same thing and you will get similar results. It's very, very powerful. As a matter of fact, if you are marketing to the right people, and if you are making sure that you are, your messaging is around here. I have a, a, a woman that I know, she's a consultant and she does a, consulting for dentistry. And her whole thing is built around wine tasting. And all she does every time she goes to her practice, it's talking to other uh, uh, business owners who want to do business over wine. Well, I don't drink at all, so I'm not her ideal client. I'm also not a woman. But if I was a woman, my wife would not be her ideal client. I, uh, drinking's not my thing, so I would not be her ideal client. And that's okay. She's not sitting there going, oh no, I'm missing out on Dino. Because she's got her ideal client and she's working with them and they love her. But when you know that, you actually can charge more. It'll overcome price. It'll overcome economy. As long as you know who your ideal client is and you're focused on it. And again, I'm just going to end with Dean Jackson again. Dean Jackson is so amazing at, at everything he does. And he says, and I'm going to say number one profit activator for your business is to be crystal clear on my, on my target market. But he said this, and I'm going to end with this. He said, if you look at your customers, I'm sorry, if you know who your customer is, you can look at your customers and see where they are going and create the product after it. Meaning, whatever, whatever you're going to deliver, you can actually see ahead of where they're going. Like Wayne Gretzky says, right? He doesn't skate, he skate, doesn't skate to the puck. He skates to where the puck is going to go. And that's why he's so successful. You have to be willing to know where your client is going to go. you got to be able to get in their head. I'm sorry, I said I was going to end on that. But I see this all the time. People, if, you are mar if your target market is on Instagram and you're using Facebook and doing Facebook ads, you're missing out on your target market. You're wasting money. Sure, you might get one or two or a few clients from that, but if you knew how to use Instagram and use uh, Insta celebrities and use the local people in your area who, who focus on Instagram, you will get so much more done if and, and get much more productivity and make more money if you're targeting on Instagram because that's where your ideal client is. All right, so go where your client is. In order to do that, you must know, no matter what, you must know out of everything you talked about, who your ideal client is and what's their, what, who your ideal client is and what is their avatar. 
What do they look like? What do they smell like? What do they act like? Do that and you will win the day. Now listen, if you want to know more little tips like this from Amy and I, please be sure to get your 30-minute uh, strategy session with Amy. You're going to love it. There's absolutely no obligation. All the obligation is is for you to show up and really just be open and honest with us of where you are and where you want to go. If you want to take your business to the next level, if you really want to rise above all the competition in your area, which, of course, as you know, I don't believe in competition, but if you want to arrive, uh, rise above all of them, then get on a call with us and we're going to see if we can help you out. Look, we're very good about being able to find out who's our ideal client and be able to say, hey, yeah, I think that we're a fit for what you want to do for your goals and your desires and how you want to grow your business. Or we're very open about saying, you know what, that's not us, that's not what we do, or we're not a fit for you, but there are other people I can tell you who, to, who you should go to. All right, so have an amazing day. Get on a call with Amy, or not, Amy and uh, we'll see you at the next video.